Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a massive round of applause for Kate Waters as she takes the stage. Kate. Uh, I thought they were joking when they talked about walk-up music, but they weren't. Uh, that's the first time that's ever happened to me. Uh, so I'm going to talk to you today about uh, the transformation of ITV. That was the title that I was given. But actually, I think this is a story that's not just about transformation. It's about how we have chosen to disrupt ourselves uh, in an industry that is obviously being heavily disrupted. Uh, so to understand this, um, if you'll forgive me, I'm going to tell those of you who might be a little bit less familiar with ITV a bit of the context and a bit of our history, because I think it's really important that you understand this in order to understand uh, the journey that we have been on. So there are three things that you need to know. Uh, the first is that uh, we are the UK's largest commercial broadcaster. Um, Justin very kindly said we were the largest UK broadcaster. I think the BBC still beat us on that, uh, but they don't take ads, thankfully. Uh, so we are the, the UK's largest commercial broadcaster. Um, and that picture that you can see behind me is of the first ever ad that ran on British television. It was for SR Gibbs uh, toothpaste, and it ran nearly 70 years ago because ITV is a business that has been going in one form or another for 70 years. So actually, we are an amalgamation of 14 regional TV companies, um, and we are also a public service broadcaster. So we're not just a commercial business. We're a business that actually has a, a license from Ofcom to represent the nations and the regions of the UK. Um, and obviously, with that comes both a kind of responsibility um, and also a fair amount of, you know, of hard work and cost and the need to sort of deliver to those audiences. And the third third thing that it's worth bearing in mind is that unlike Channel 4 in the UK, who is both a commercial broadcaster and also a public service broadcaster, we are a publicly quoted company. So our shares are traded on the stock market. So the third really important set of stakeholders for us are all of our investors and those city analysts. So if you think about that as the context, that's what you're trying to transform. We've got advertisers to keep happy. We've got a pretty heavy duty public service remit to make sure that we meet. And we've got a whole bunch of, of sometimes quite activist stakeholders to kind of think about as well. So that's the kind of context. And of course, let's not forget two other small things, one of which is obviously the fact that we've got a whole load of new competitors. So obviously, Amazon Prime, Netflix, uh, YouTube's not on this picture, but that's the one that I would uh, probably worry about the most. And um, if any of you have read anything about the economic situation in the UK, you know we've been through a period of what we might call a little bit of instability. So we're all crossing our fingers uh, and hoping very much that the new government helps, uh, helps to stabilise things. But instability and the legacy of that is obviously not good for consumer confidence and nor for advertiser confidence either. Um, and then you add this into the mix. So I confess, in my past, I used to work for uh, ad agencies. I was a brand planner and a creative planner. And I spent a lot of time with clients trying to help them think about how to, uh, how to essentially get people to think differently about their brand. So we used to do a lot of these exercises when we'd sit in focus groups and say to people, what would this brand be like if it came to life as a person? Um, so I was really tickled by this chart, which I found, um, which is from some research that was done for ITV in 2020. Uh, and essentially, what you find is when you ask people in 2020, what, does ITV, what would ITV be like if they came to life as a person? Uh, they would basically be female, that's okay, uh, old, uh, slightly decrepit, um, and probably not very interesting. So there's a brand problem that we're trying to deal with. And that brand problem is, of course, a legacy of the kind of 70 years of history. So there is a lot of stuff, there's a lot of context, a lot of baggage when you're trying to make this kind of transformation. Um, and that's why I think this quote from Feni Shakur, um, who was a very uh, active member of the Black Panthers, um, and for all you rap fans out there, she's also the mother of Tupac. Um, but, uh, but she talks a lot about the, you know, how uncomfortable change is. Um, and obviously, with, you know, when you are changing, you have to cause quite a lot of disruption in order for that change to stick. And I think that's something that is really resonant um, in terms of ITV's uh, journey. So, so what I'm going to talk to you about is all the ways in which I think we have, uh, and we still are, uh, attempting to disrupt ourselves and that kind of legacy. 
So, um, I guess the kind, of, the kind of most obvious thing here is, yes, we are on this journey in terms of transforming ourselves from legacy broadcaster uh, into a kind of modern streaming business. Um, that is definitely not a transformation that has finished. So I'd say we're in the and territory at the moment. We are both a broadcaster and a streamer. Um, and that, that, I think, has really taught us to think very differently about the business and about some of the decisions that we make. Um, but first of all, you know, the, the, the most obvious I guess, you know, I mean, it is, this is the streaming business, right? So the, the, the streaming bit of the business is called ITVX. Now, we launched this in uh, November 2022. Um, before that, we, we had a, a streaming platform, if you like. Um, it was called ITV Hub. Um, but the big shift that we had to make was moving from ITV Hub, which was very much a catch-up service. So all those little old ladies who were dutifully watching uh, Coronation Street, which is our, sort of one of the big sort of platform shows in the, in, the, in the schedule, if they missed that, they could catch up on ITV Hub. ITVX, however, is not just a catch-up service. It had to be a proper streaming service, a place that people would go to discover new content uh, that they could watch on demand. So the first massive change we made, the city didn't like this, going back to those kind of city uh, stakeholders, was we invested a pretty significant amount of money in extra content. So, so the content budget for ITVX in its um, first year was £160 million, um, incremental to obviously all of the enormous content spent that goes on um, the main sort of schedule anyway. Um, and that was the single biggest increase in investment in content since the launch of Channel 4 in the UK. Um, and it had a huge impact because it took us from about 1,500 hours of content on the old ITV hub to 25,000 hours of content is where we now are um, on ITVX. So just in volume terms, um, it's a, you know, you think about the number of people involved in having to do those deals and find the content and license it and do all of those sorts of things. It's a really big shift um, in, in what we were doing. Um, and of course, it's not just the volume of content, it's the type of content. Um, so uh, we, like a, we like a little saying at ITV, and our content strategy uh, can, broadly speaking, for ITVX be summed up as bonfires and fireworks. So I'm going to tell you a bit more about the bonfires and fireworks. So. A bonfire show is a show that, a little bit like a bonfire, um, it burns for a long time, but it's almost like the kind of embers of a bonfire, so it's quite small, it's not making a kind of huge splash. Classic example for anybody who's got uh, teenage uh, daughters, probably, uh, this is the Vampire Diaries. So the Vampire Diaries is a US acquisition, so we don't make it. Um, we obviously kind of license it from, uh, from the makers, um, and it's got masses and masses and masses of episodes. So this thing runs for, I think, uh, eight or nine seasons. And it doesn't attract a huge audience for any one of those episodes, but they just keep coming back and watching more and more and more. So it's brilliant for, for, for giving you that kind of on-demand content for sort of s segments where you can just keep finding something else that you want to watch. So there's a lot of bonfire-type content, but what we also need are fireworks. So a really great example of, uh, of fireworks uh, was this show that ran, uh, it, was, it was stripped on the linear broadcast service for four days at the beginning of the year, and it also dropped in its entirety um, on ITVX. So Mr. Bates versus the Post Office, I think it's fair to say, is a very US, uh, US UK even, specific uh, story. So it's not one that we're going to be selling around the world, I'm pretty sure. Um, but in uh, four weeks, it attracted uh, 12 million viewers, 7 million of whom watched it on ITVX. And that's a really unusual viewing pattern because it's an incredibly high spike, um, but over quite a short period of time. And it's a kind of great, uh, I guess, um, justification of ITVX in terms of it being a place where people can go and discover content. And interestingly, over 10% of those people hadn't watched ITVX for a year beforehand, so it was great at reactivating really long-term lapsed viewers. And nearly 85% of people went on to watch something else. So actually, it was, again, a very good way of, of bringing people into the service and getting them to discover something. And I thought I'd just touch on um, one interesting um, sort of viewer behavior, if you like, that we are spotting and learning to leverage. And this is what we call a binge bump. So um, this show is unforgotten. Uh, there are about five series of it. It's much, much loved. 
Um, and when the last series was, uh, when the marketing for the last series went live on uh, our broadcast channels, um, what we immediately spotted was a whole bunch of people binging on the previous um, sort of seasons. So what this tells us is when we're basically launching a new season of a much loved show, we give it a much longer run up because what we want to do is give people as much time as possible to sort of do their viewing homework to watch all of those kind of previous episodes and previous shows. So the thing that's really interesting, I think, about this journey um, to becoming a streamer is um, absolutely we are nowhere near finished yet. Um, and what we're doing is discovering all of these little audience viewing behaviors that we can begin to play with and we can begin to understand and we can work out how we can use them to kind of drive um, the maximum incremental viewing that we can. But I think it's, it's you know, it's, this, is, this is just about the content. And I think what ITVX um, has done brilliantly as well has given us the opportunity to kind of really change the way in which we are selling advertising to advertisers. So rather than me talk about it, I'm just going to show you a short video now that explains uh, how this works. Planet V is ITV's programmatic buying platform. It's not just the biggest in television, but also the UK's second largest programmatic video platform. Launched in 2020, Planet V has welcomed over 2,000 users to manage 99% of bookings, totaling £1 billion of billings. It's completely self-service for advertisers and agencies. It's their advertising in their hands, designed to be simple to use and configurable, and putting them in complete control. Here's the Explore Audiences area, which helps users quickly plan an audience and check pricing outside of the campaign creation journey. The new Audience Builder offers a much quicker user experience, as well as search functionality, allowing brands to browse all the targeting opportunities on offer and customize campaigns in real time with transparent pricing on view. With over 20,000 targeting options, we meet the needs of all organizations, from big brands creating large-scale campaigns to sole trade is targeting a specific postcode. Planet V has fast become an integral tool for our buyers and we've got quicker at bringing new users on board. Users can browse and plan more efficiently and can save audiences to use later, allowing teams to work faster and more fluidly across all types of campaigns. Broadcaster Promotions is our new shop front, where buyers can explore current packages and audiences at a glance, including ITV's latest AdLabs innovations. And for the broadcaster, they're incredibly easy to configure and publish live. These exciting curated packages run for a limited time and can either be available to everyone or targeted towards selected brands. Our total TV packages combine digital and linear products, allowing brands to streamline their whole campaign purchase and furthers our journey to making Planet V a one-stop shop for all types of TV video campaigns. Uh, so just a, a little taste of what uh, of what we're doing with Planet V. Um, and you, you may have spotted Planet V is not branded ITV. And that's because it's an example of the, the kind of next, I guess, big disruptive sort of change that we are making, uh, which is about essentially a shift from being kind of market leader and you know, arguably thinking we could do whatever we wanted to do for, you know, and people would just come running, uh, to learning how much better we need to be able to be collaborative um, in our industry. So Planet V um, is, is there as a solution for the industry. If, you know, if they want it, we have uh, STV on there. We're doing a trial with Sky. Um, I know, I'm sure that probably the Planet V team have come and talked to lots of you over here. Um, but we are also collaborating, I think, in lots of other interesting ways. And the, the one example I just wanted to quickly highlight here uh, is something that we launched two weeks ago, um, which we're doing in conjunction with uh, Thinkbox, uh, with Channel 4, and with Sky. Um, and it's a measurement solution called Lantern, uh, which is all about building a multi-outcome panel in order to help us um, understand all of the things that TV is doing um, in that kind of intermedi intermediate digital outcome space, whether that's kind of driving search traffic, whether that's kind of web visits, or whether it's online sales. So the ambition is that we will be able to measure for most advertising campaigns all of those outcomes. Um, and I think that's really exciting. It's been a two-year journey, pretty much, to kind of from the initial sort of conversations. Um, you know, it's involved compromise. Um, there's a long way to go yet. Um, but it's a really different and really exciting, I think, new behavior uh, for ITV. 
And from a commercial perspective, I think the biggest sort of cultural change really is the way in which we are beginning now to work with our agency uh, customers um, and indeed our, our advertisers. And I'd frame this as being a shift from being a trader, where TV is traded, effectively, you know, if you worked at ITV 15 years ago, you just sat and waited for the phone to ring and then you took an order. Um, it's very different now. Um, and what we're doing is really evolving those relationships into something which is much more interesting and much more sort of sophisticated. So um, one example of this, right, we, my, my team runs all of the measurement work, so you'll see that I've got lots of measurement examples in here. Um, one of the most powerful ways for persuading advertisers of the power of TV advertising is to run what we call a geotest. So essentially, you run advertising in one region uh, and you compare what happens uh, in that region versus you know, the rest of the country where everything else is the same. Um, but to do that, in not all cases, but in many cases, you need to essentially upweight your TV spend. And that's difficult. That's asking advertisers to spend more money with us. Well, actually, it's not. Because one of the things we have done with our agencies is create mechanisms so that if they hit certain targets and, and all the rest of it, we will enable them to draw down on value, which means they can then fund these kind of tests for their advertisers. So they win and we win. Um, and we get loads and loads of exciting looking graphs like the one that you can see there from lots and lots and lots of different different sorts of outcomes. So that's one kind of interesting example. Um, and then at the opposite end of the spectrum, uh, we have now a quite well-established media for equity offering, uh, which is taking uh, scale-up businesses like Spoke, uh, which is one of the original um, partners that we had. We also work with What Three Words, um, and we've done these deals where essentially, you know, they, they will we will exchange uh, media value for equity, uh, work with them very closely. In these cases, we do all of the media planning, uh, we do we wrap management in, um, and that builds this kind of much deeper kind of really interesting uh, relationship. Again, it's something that we've just been doing for the last sort of three or four years. So it's quite a new behavior. Um, and again, we're learning lots from it. Um, and the kind of fourth pillar that I just quickly wanted to touch on was something that is um, really interesting. When I got to ITV, you could, you could see that there was a, a kind of sense of people just sort of sitting and waiting a little bit. You know, it's a huge business. It's not an entrepreneurial business. But we are becoming much more entrepreneurial and much more innovative uh, in what we do. So again, just a couple of weeks ago, we, we launched uh, a thing called ITV Kaching, uh, the discount thing, um, which is a new, which is essentially a way of helping uh, helping advertisers make sure people convert when they put goods in their their digital basket. Um, it's a completely new revenue stream for us, and it's absolutely born of a need for us to think about how do we diversify our revenue in a world that is changing so fast. Um, and then most recently, uh, we have put off into the AI um, generative AI world. So uh, this is a couch potato that we created uh, for a tiny advertiser who would not otherwise have been able to advertise on ITV. They've got 10 shops in Northern Ireland. Um, they're a sofa manufacturer, and we've built this ad end-to-end -end for them using Gen AI. Um, and this is a service that we've just launched for more of those very small news-to-TV advertisers who couldn't otherwise afford to be on air. Um, so I guess the kind of key question is, is it working, right? We've, I've shown you sort of, you know, the big stuff and some of the smaller things that we're doing. Um, and I, I think I'd be wrong to say that we're done, but we are making good progress. So, you know, everything appears to be sort of gradually moving in the right direction. So ITV uh, X streaming hours are up. Uh, we're hitting our uh, revenue targets. Um, this year looks pretty good. Um, we'll see what happens next year. And guess what? Um, most recent research, who would ITV be uh, if they came to life as a party, uh, as, as a person? Well, if they threw a party, apparently we'd be the person uh, where uh, everybody knows they could enjoy themselves. So we are beginning to kind of keep that lovely democratic feel of the brand that we've always had, but hopefully bringing it a little bit younger, a little bit uh, more engaging for more audiences. And of course, that's what matters to you and what matters to, uh, to advertisers as well. So thank you very much. Okay, I would ask you a question, but you're going to join me on the panel. Yes, so I am. I'm going to ask you some of those uh, uh, questions on you're the panel. You're going to scare me and ask me later. I am, uh, I, but I am going to say, I think I said largest commercial broadcaster, or did I screw that you up? You said la largest UK broadcaster, which okay. I'd take, but yeah, I feel guilty. But okay, damn it, I messed that up. Sometimes, sometimes even I mess up. But thank you very much, Kate. That was All a brilliant right. presentation. Thank you. And <laughs> deserved.